We have all heard about the concussions in the NHL, but what about the concussions that are happening in amateur level hockey because of hits like these? Well, the statistics are about the same. 23 per 1,000 player game hours get concussed each year. So my first concussion then was, like I said, in grade 7. And my second major concussion was my first year of university. When I got my like first concussion, I was in a tournament in Cambridge. I was 12 years old and uh, I got hit and my head went right into the boards. The next game, like I still felt a little nauseous, a little sick, and but I played anyways. Didn't think of anything of it. And then I got a cross check to the back of the head at the end of the second game. In a recent Canadian study, most concussions were caused by player-to-player -player contact. Half of those were illegal hits, and 71% of concussed athletes such as Luke ended up playing in the same game. Younger players are most susceptible to concussions because of a larger head size compared to their body. So what are some of the changes in rules that could protect these amateur players? I think we need to make it mandatory that, that players wear mouth guards because it has proven to be an assisted device in preventing head injuries. However, um, it is not mandatory. Um, at this point, it is in the States. If you think you have suffered a concussion, look for these symptoms. Headaches, vomiting, nausea, fatigue, dizziness, and amnesia. Concussions in hockey are on the rise. And who knows, maybe one day, hockey will become a non-contact sport. Maybe then, Luke and Chael will be able to enjoy their favorite pastime without with the worry of getting any serious concussions. For Ion Sheridan, I'm Bill Onikoglu in Oakville.